Hello my friends and welcome into a full face of ColourPop today. I recently got their new palette in the mail. It's called Stone Cold Fox. Let's give you a sneak peek. There you go. Kind of a cool neutral palette. It feels like a cooler answer to the Bare Necessities palette that came out uh, months back. And then also there was a full brush set and I thought, gosh, I really want to try that out. I'd love to try it in a video. I think this is actually called the Stone Cold Fox brush set. It's really a lot of brushes. So I thought, yeah, um, let's try to do a full face and I'll just go ahead and use some other ColourPop products, maybe some things that are going to be a little bit it rediscovered to me maybe some things that I've used quite a bit and just take you through everything I thought that might be useful so today we are starting from absolute square one because some skincare that I really like is actually from ColourPop or the fourth ray line and this is called the daily it's the daily facial moisturizer and I really like this stuff I use this kind of interchangeably with a couple other moisturizers that I really like and something that I think is really neat about it is that it's easy to just work into the skin very quick to work into the skin Skin, but yet it feels like it leaves behind a little more moisture than most things. I hate those moisturizers where you put them on and you feel like your skin just drank them up immediately and you just kind of wonder what happened after a minute or two. This one really gives a nice soft supple feel to the skin and I think it really does mimic the way my skin comes away after I've put on the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base but it's not quite as thick of a cream as that. But I like it a lot. I'm also a big fan of the eye cream, which is what we're going to use next. The eye cream I've described as a lower cost alternative to my Charlotte Tilbury eye cream, which I still use that. You know, I paid for that, <laughs> paid for a full size of that. I went through a whole sample of my Charlotte Tilbury eye cream, and then I decided I really like this stuff. Um, I think I'll get a full size, but it's pretty expensive, you know, and it has a very thin feel. It's nicely moisturizing, but the reasons why I like that are like some of the same reasons why I like this. It doesn't feel incredibly heavy, but it doesn't feel not non-existent. It's like the perfect texture middle ground for an eye cream. But again, same characteristic as the moisturizer. You put it on and you feel like, okay, I feel nicely moisturized right now. I mean, this is a time of year where, yeah, I can tell just being in a car for a little while, it makes my skin feel drier and tighter. Um, so we can use that little extra moisture boost. Those two products do a great job. And it's nice to be able to find a couple of really good quality moisturizing products um, from an affordable brand. Now I'm going to move on to foundation and I'm going to use my Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. And I have this in the shade Light 40N. I feel like, I don't know, maybe it will be a little bit better shade match. I think it was a bit light before. And I need to get my brush roll opened up down here. As far as the larger brushes, I think this is the brush that I'm going to use for foundation. It's called the F29. And um, it's, gosh, these brushes are so soft. They're really pretty. I love this. Is there like a barely there cool pink quality to these. I see it in the lower part of the bristles as well. I have never tried ColourPop brushes before. Totally new experience for me. Um, so I'm going to pump out a little bit of this. Whoa. One pump gives you quite a bit. And we'll dab this around. And I remember being um, a little surprised by the quality of the coverage on this one. So I'm going to dab this around. This brush, um, it's a really good size. The bristles have a lot of movement to them. I wouldn't mind it being a little stiffer. I need to get on their website and kind of check the status of brushes that are normally available. Like, I really didn't check and see first if everything that's offered in this brush set is actually something you could pick up individually or as part of other brush sets. or I, It's just really been a part of the line that I haven't looked into much at all. Color isn't looking really that bad for me right now. Hey, I got a question for you guys. Um, do you ever get like little, I guess I'd call them zits on your skin where they don't look like a full blown white head that's like, oh, I could just pop that. Or they don't look like a really inflamed, you know, deep seated zit on your skin, but they're just like little bumps that never get any bigger and they don't really go anywhere and they don't look like really like z traditional zits. But I've had on my forehead, like, I don't know, one, two, three little areas there. And one of them I messed with last night. I don't know if I should have, but I messed with it. And then I put on some um, Clean and Clear Persa Gel, which I haven't used in ages. But I mean, that usually does the job on stuff. I just, I left them alone because I just thought maybe they'd go away on their own. 
but they'd been sitting there for like weeks on my forehead and I could just see them like just as a little bit of texture sort of underneath my makeup. There's no soreness to them. There's no redness to them. Um, it's just like an odd little thing. What's that about? Like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> that foundation is all blended in. To me, it seems like a solid medium coverage. Um, definitely added a little additional moisture to the skin. This, as they say, is a hyaluronic hydrating foundation. Ooh, there's a little still gooping from the tip. Not gonna waste that. Okay, just dab it in. But the skin looks really fresh. I mean, I don't feel overly sticky, but there's a little tackiness to the touch on my skin. One little issue I have here, there is like a um, borderline fleeciness like on the interior of this brush roll and I feel like that is just screaming to get dirty you know to have like any remaining product on your brush if you stick the brush back in here it's gonna cling so bad get that really really dirty is my prediction um, I'm not even sure I want to stick the brush back in there next up I'm gonna use the concealer which I have in the shade light 33 C and I really enjoyed the concealer like this was kind of my even bigger take away than the foundation as far as something I really enjoyed coverage wise from this line. I'm going to give a couple dots out here. This is a shade that's kind of a little on the lighter side as far as my skin tone goes and in comparison to the foundation. I'm going to try this brush. This is the F31. It kind of reminds me, let's compare, it really reminds me of a similar shape to this Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush. Like really, really similar. Maybe just a teensy bit um, like slimmer this way, not quite as wide. Get that blended in again. The I wish the bristles were just a hint more stiff for steps like this with the creams. Like maybe if I were using this for some kind of powder step, it would feel fine. But you know how like you're blending out a cream, you're trying to build up coverage, you're trying to be able to stamp a product in. And if the bristles are too mobile and a little too bendy, not quite as densely packed as you might like, then you experience that feeling of, okay, I've got to press harder or I've got to do this a little different way. This is not bad. I'm not saying I don't like it, but it's just not quite as good as my experience with other brushes. Okay, I feel like I could use a little extra concealer on this eye. Not sure why. <laughs> Left eye, what you doing over there? We did all the fall things this weekend. We went to the um, apple orchard where we got some apple cider donuts and a big old thing of some fresh picked local honey crisp apples. I don't know if you guys know this, but Southern Illinois is home to quite a few nice little orchards and wineries and stuff like that. So it was fun to hit that up, although it was very chilly that day. And then yesterday night we did something called the um, Pumpkin Glow Pumpkin Stroll. And it's kind of set up around this pond area where they've got little clusters of carved pumpkins. I'm not sure who does the carving. I don't know if it's kids, adults. There's some really like sophisticated ones. And they do it like as the sun goes down and you just get to walk around with your kids and look at them. There's not a lot else going on there at that time. But it feels like one of the few like safe outdoorsy kind of things you know you can do during this time when you're not trying to pack your people into some kind of crowded event. Like it's just a nice thing to be able to do and I feel like this Halloween may not be really the same for my kids as usual. So we're just trying to take advantage of those things that feel like normal and like we can do that and Biddy is just she had the time of her life like she was exclaiming at every pumpkin she saw. Mommy look at this one look at it was wonderful. Okay, for the face like setting powder, I'm gonna use my pressed no filter powder, which I actually got one. This is a build your own palette. So I have several blushes, a bronzer, a couple highlights, and I also put in, um, this is the shade Fair of the no filter sheer pressed powder, okay? So I made this quite a while back after I put together my um, eyeshadow one. So I'm pretty sure they have all the same options on their website. You pick an outer palette, you can put in like any combination of magnetic pans that you want. So they could be eyes, they could be eye and face, just face. Um, I don't know if people really talk about that so much anymore from ColourPop because they're putting out so dang many products, various new collections, but this is a really neat option. I'll uh, link below to my video about building your own palette. Okay, so this powder makes me look instantly mattified on some areas, big time. Um, without looking 
really too heavy. I don't feel like I put that much product on, but it's nice. I feel a little more perfected, a little more evened out, and the skin feels more set in those zones like the T-zone and the under eye that I kind of worry about sometimes. And for that, I use the F32, which is a lot, lot like my e.l.f. Small Tapered brush. Not too many differences there. The size is very similar, the feel. For the brush that I might use for all over face powder or bronzer, this is the biggest one in the brush roll. And like to compare it to the next one down, it's really big, you know? Like this is the one I use for foundation and then this is the next biggest. Um, and it's the F28 and I really like the taper. I like the shape overall, like it's got a little bit of flatness there. It's a little pinched right here at the ferrule, so it's not just like huge and round. Nice taper, super soft, but very, very full and a little bigger brush than I'm really used to using. But I'm gonna use it with this, what seems to be a super dark bronzer that I have here. It's um, bits and pieces, but let's just go with it. Tap in a little bit. Gosh, it's so big. I feel kind of out of control with giant brushes. I don't know, gang. It's not that it's bad, it's just it takes some getting used to, I think. This is the kind of shade where I feel like I'm getting a little bit from it, but I'm trying to use like hardly any because it seems so dark and I'm a little bit scared of it. Kind of pinching the brush a little bit more just to target the application. Okay, that's fine. We're good. We've got a little bronzer. We're good. You ever had a brush to just kind of stress you out a little bit? A couple more brushes here. This really jumbo sized looking blender brush. I would say the this F33 would be like a highlighter brush really. So we'll save it for that. And then the F30 seems to be like a blush brush. I think this is going to be perfect for a blush. I'm again going to go to my palette here that I created and I'll use this shade called Parakeet right here. I have two matte blushes. This is Parakeet. A very peachy blush, potentially a lot of pigment there. I forgot the eye looks probably going to be pretty cool. Maybe I'll mix in some of the pink as well. Two blushes, no problem. Mm, that pink is so fresh. What's the pink called? Um, that's called Above and Beyond. I hope these shades are still available. Brands, if you could not like just turn around and discontinue things just, you know, a month or two after you made them, that'd be nice. Then I'm going to go into this highlighter shade here. This is called Total Package and it looks kind of rose golden there. Pick up a little bit. This brush is interesting. Like the normal brush that I would use for highlight really isn't tons bigger than this, but it's a little more dense. Here, I feel like I'm getting an even more like light and sheer application of the highlight. Like, can you tell I'm glowy there? Because everything was pretty much matte before, but it's a very sheer glow, but it's certainly there. New brushes, they take a little getting used to sometimes. I'm really excited. I'm probably most excited about the eye brushes in this brush roll because I feel like I have a hunch looking at them, looking at their size and shape, that they did a pretty good job of doing a very complete collection, like everything I might need. There we go, friends. Again, it felt like I kept going back to the product again and again, but I was certainly getting a glowy effect. It just wasn't quite as instant as I get with my other, my Moda Highlight and Glow Brush. Okay, not bad. Then I do have the um, Pretty Fresh Mist, the Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist that hasn't been used in a bit. There we go, warmer up. That has a really pleasant scent and a very nice mist with no like little droplet fallout, you know, when sometimes it gives you a nice mist, but then there's, it spurts out droplets too that land on your face. I don't want to stop. Love. We're misted. Feeling good. Just talking about how some of these complexion face steps went over with me. I think this is a quality foundation here. I think it's good for medium coverage. And I really like the concealer as well. I think it's nice about not making you feel too dried out on the under eye. I don't think it's the most maximum coverage you could ever achieve. Like I think maybe you could do a little better with like an e.l.f. camo concealer. Uh, the hydrating version of that would pretty closely compare to this in terms of feel, but give you a little more 
coverage if you want it. But if you're into ColourPop and you're placing a ColourPop order and you're curious about things, you know, I do like that product. The moisturizer and the eye cream are total studs here as far as like how impressed are you with different products. Those two are really top notch. Um, the setting spray, I'm having kind of a rediscovered moment with that. Some of these different powder products, like I like them. I'm not jumping up and down saying, oh my gosh, they're the best ever. I really like the blushes that are in here. I think the powder is pretty replaceable. So are the highlights and the bronzer. Honestly, I chose a shade online that was just a little darker than I would have needed. Maybe a lot darker. We're going to move on to brows now and I'm using the Bang & Brunette. This is just the ColourPop brow pencil. It's a skinny pencil, so comparable in size to like an ABH Brow Wiz. And it's going to have your other end with a spoolie on it that you can use to rake the product through. This is a very soft um, brow pencil. Like it transfers a lot of product on. I have already used up an entire one. I'm trying to think, has it been two? Because I remember kind of using a couple different shades at first, but I know for sure I've gone through at least one very, very quickly. I've never gone through a brow product as fast as I have the ColourPop skinny brow pencil. So keep that in mind. Um, it's easy to use, but you apply really light pressure. And even if you do, you are going to wear it down kind of quick. So get that all in there. The shade seems good for me though. And again, it's not a difficult application by any means. I would say this forces you to have a little lighter touch uh, because it does transfer down so easily. ABH Brow Wiz in comparison feels like a much drier product. And then I have a brow gel that I remember not really understanding the first time I used this. I'm not sure why I even still have it on hand. The Brow Boss Gel and it's like clear but it's cloudy looking. I don't I don't really get it at all. Like it kind of deposits at times some little little clouds of creaminess. It's like a creamy gel. Not sure what's happening here. No more a fan of this than the first time I used it. Again, it was kind of buried in my collection. So I found it. I'm using it. It's ColourPop. Meh. There's some things I just don't understand. I'm really excited to move on to this eyeshadow palette and I'm first going to find, where's my eyeshadow primer? There it is. Milani eyeshadow primer because I don't have a ColourPop one. Does ColourPop make an eye primer? Get a little bit on here. And this is one of those palettes where I'm like, hmm, have I seen this palette before? Like, is this going to be a ton of overlap with other shades? I know they just came out with a smaller taupe palette which I was sent and I looked at them side by side and I thought, wow, it looks like everything pretty much in this taupe palette is contained in this Stone Cold Fox palette. See, here we are. Um, if you like cool colors, you're probably like majorly in luck with this one. And what was that other palette? I don't think they make it anymore. The Fame palette, was that the one I really liked? You know, it was a cooler palette and something about looking at this spread of shades kind of reminds me of some of the things in there. You've got some, a couple of rows actually. This one's kind of like a dusty rose and a mauve sort of row. Super cool icy silvery stuff, um, light taupes kind of rolling down these two rows, and more of a brownish row right here. So that's just kind of the way I'm drawn to look at it is through those vertical color families. Along the bottom, a lot of depth, um, a lot of nice different deep shades to take it in those, you know, more smoky, darker, dramatic directions. Eyeliner shades, certainly an option there. As I was kind of randomly swatching these the other day, I thought the pigmentation seemed really good, really smooth. Um, so we'll see how they apply. I'm going to start out with the brush that they have here. We have, by the way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different eye brushes. I probably won't need them all for this look, but this E23 reminds me a lot of my Sigma E25 that I would use in the crease to start things out. So that's what we're going to do here. I say let's try to keep it just really nice and cool. I'm going to go over here to this color called Ghost Town. You've got quite a few different options for a mid-tone crease color. Okay, this brush is not quite as full. I can tell that right off the bat. Ooh, that's a cool looking shade. Very like dusty, cool mauve, lavender kind of thing going on there. Really nice. It's got a little more color in it than I was expecting. Let's go back to the side. This brush just has a hint more flatness, a little less fluff compared to my E25, but I'm not really hating it. 
you can kind of get into that inner crease pretty easily with it. And as you build the shade up, see how it gets like that murky lavender thing going on? By the way, are you guys proud of me? I've got a fresh dew on my nails. Again, with the Kathleen Lights, I guess it's her fall collection. Um, I love that shade I had on last week called MIA. And this one is called um, Something About Paris. Um, the, the shade name is not Something About Paris, but it, it has something to do with Paris. Um, it's so pretty. This is two coats. One coat is even kind of a nice, just sheer nude shimmer, but two coats is like, wow, I love that. I could wear that. Like if somebody said, we need to confine you to one shade on your nails, like this might do for me. What are we thinking there? I really like that color. And then if we wanted to go a little lighter, just thinking about maybe blending out the edge, I could go up here to trip. Cause that seems a little bit more like just skin tony beige, light beige. Kind of take that around the outer edge, softens it up even more. And we do have kind of a full blending type of brush here, an E22. It's nicely tapered down the sides as well. I'm going to take that into this matte cream called Lux. So we've got kind of a matte base happening right now. I'm in the mood to just go in with something really dark and just play up the outside. I've got a big flat brush here, this E24, which I really like the looks of, nice and flat. Um, I've also got the E25, which is a little bit, you know, not as wide, a little chunkier, might work that in as well. I'm going to go into this very cool gray shade right in the center that really like grabs my eye as soon as I open the palette. I see this color here called Rumor Mill. It's a matte, very true standard gray. And I'm going to pat this on the outside. Feels weird not using my Sigma E60. Oh man. Is this what it's like to like be in a relationship with a different person after you've been in the same relationship for a long, long time? <laughs> Is that what it's like when you switch up your brushes? <laughs> I feel like this brush is a little softer and a little less stiff than I'm used to, so it may not be packing it on quite as well. Maybe it's time to pull in this guy. Let's try it with the same shade. There's some stiffness. This may not be the palette for everyone. As I mentioned at the start, like, oh, it looks like it contains pretty much everything that's in that little taupe palette. For some people, you may be saying like a nine, what is that, a nine color palette? That's plenty for me. That's all the options I wanna have to choose between. And then there are others who are like, no, I want absolutely every option for a cool toned eye. <laughs> and then maybe you want something bigger like this. I don't know. We've all got different comfort zones, different desires. I mean, for those who feel like there's always too many warm palettes coming out, maybe you you feel something like this is way, way overdue, you know, and you want all the colors. Okay, so I took that shade. I think that's about as fully as that's gonna go on. That's the shade called Rumor Mill. And I put that on the outside there and I really want to go even darker. I really want to play with this shade too, this one called Obsidian right here, which is a very, very dusty dark plum. And I'm kind of overlapping things in the outside now. Outer corner, I'm flipping this brush. This is kind of a nice little flippable brush to apply to the crease as well as the lid. It's tapered all the way down, so it does a good job of that. Hmm, that's interesting. Interesting little color. Working in with our gray. I was going to grab the black or like the near black brown, but this is a bit more interesting, isn't it? Mm. What I think I will do is take some of that shade now with the original brush that I was using in my crease and see what happens is that shade has a chance to sheer out a little bit more. Super pretty. I'm really enjoying kind of that haziness that's coming out of this shade. It's like kind of mauve-y, a little bit plummy, no doubt very cool. That's that shade called Obsidian, getting 
into the crease and then just kind of all out over this area. I'm really impressed that they included a brush that looks like this in this set, which is often the most overlooked kind of brush. It's the E27. It reminds me quite a bit of my smaller brush from Profusion that's this size. Um, the Essence of Beauty Fine Crease Brush Duo. Do you remember that from like the earliest days of my channel? Something small that you can use in the outer corner of your crease, um, creating an outer V or whatever you want to do there. I might take a little bit of this into Obsidian as well. It's amazing what switching up your brush can do for the different shades. You can't always just use one brush and one shade and say, okay, that's what it does, because a different brush will take it in a different direction. I was just seeing if I could make even more depth out of that shade. Let's also go into this one called Drama Mama. <laughs> Am I a drama mama sometimes? Sometimes when it's getting really close to bedtime and things aren't winding down the way they should, I could become a drama mama. See what we're just doing with that? That is a very neutral kind of shade. Like it's not really changing the warmth level of the look, but I'm just kind of getting it right there in the crease. This is a great brush to give you some control in your crease if everything else feels a little too big. Drama Mama. So far, I've stayed all matte. Probably want to see how at least one shimmer works into this. Take my fluffy brush since just so much has been added here. I'm really impressed that I've worked with these deep dark shades. I've not experienced any fallout here, which is really nice. I'm gonna go back to that largest flat brush, the E24. And what do we think? I'm kind of intrigued by this shade over here called Mystery at the top of that mauve row. Oh, it goes on nice with the brush. I was kind of planning to have to pack that on with my finger or something. Nice, okay. Very easy. Beautiful. What does it even look like? It looks like an icy pink kind of mixed with a little rose gold. But the icy pink one. That's what that shade is. This is another interesting shade though. It just caught my eye down there in the corner. It's called Play It Coal. And it looks like it has really, see that little bit of reflectiveness? Ooh, I have to play with that one on another day really just icy fun, but not as icy as you could go, because look. <laughs> okay, digging it. Let me just show you guys the remaining brushes, because I think we're getting down here to where there's not a lot much else to do. Um, we've got this E26, which is nice and short. It's kind of like a squattier version of this E25 that I used that ended up being the most effective thing to pat on outer corner stuff and flip here, you know, when I was packing on. Uh, it packed on a little better than the larger flat brush, but this one I would see as more of a smudge brush. Um, you've got a straight up pencil brush with the E28, very standard looking. Um, there's an angled brush, which is nice, an E30, so that could be brow, that could be eyeliner. And then an E29, which is just as delicate as they come. It's a very, like, minimal hair brush here. And this would be nice, I think, as a detail brush, patting around the inner corner, just tiny little specks of color different places. Like for this look, I might take this shade called Dreamful which seems like a matte with embedded sparkle. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Yeah, it really shows. Ooh, interesting. It really, you know, has that white pops, unlike just a straight shimmer would. So I'm using that little detail brush right around there. See what I mean? Interesting. I gotta tell you guys, the owl activity in my area has ramped up this season, this fall like no other fall before. I'm always hearing just these soft little owl hoots in the morning and it's the sweetest thing ever. I love it. There that is. Wow. If you go into Dreamful, be ready for some brightness. Very interesting because it's not just shimmer, so it always kind of catches the light. Okay, now I'm gonna use the pencil brush, E28, and I'm gonna go down into Obsidian again and use that as like smoky lower liner, okay? I just really like that tone. I think that's so pretty and I think that's the majority of what you're seeing kind of shearing out and everything around the eye is that dusty plummy thing there. So pretty. No complaints about this pencil brush. Nicely sized, 
just fits that area really well. I'm gonna stop there now for the shadow. Okay, I just wanted to use a black liner from this brand and I've dug and looked everywhere. I can't find a black liner that I have. So I'm just gonna use my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof here. I'm gonna use this across the upper lash line. The liner I was looking for was even just a pencil, but I couldn't find that. I do have thoughts though on their retractable cream gel liners. I think they dry up kind of fast. That's just been my experience. They feel creamy as all get out at the start and then they kind of dry up faster than most any other product like that that I have. Okay, I gave it a little bit of a wing. I love how I'm like, oh, I probably won't use every brush in this collection, but I've used like nearly every brush because now I'm gonna want this um, angled brush with this shade rock bottom, this black. It's kind of a big angled brush actually. Might be even better suited for brow than this kind of thing, but I'm just using that to sort of smoke out that wing. Next up, friends, I'm just gonna do my mascara, which sadly I do not have a ColourPop mascara, sorry. And I'm gonna finish that and I'll be back for lips. I've got some mascara on top and bottom and I wanted to chat about this Roll With It set from ColourPop, so it's a roller gloss kit. Remember when the um, Candyland collection came out and there was like a roll-on lip gloss and I thought it actually felt kind of thin and greasy. I wasn't nuts about the feel, but I thought what if they're just test driving a new product here with this collection and now look, you know, here we are with a set of roller glosses and um, this one called Pineapple Punch. I'm gonna try this just to see like if the texture is the same. You're supposed to kind of hold them downwards so product can goop onto <laughs> that roller ball and when you turn it, it'll come onto the lips. I'm all for a roller ball gloss actually. Ooh, it smells good. It's just so thin. It really is kind of a greasy feel. Like I would love for a roller gloss to be kind of like those NYC ones were from way back when. They had a little more thickness, a little more of a real gloss-like texture. It can be a little thicker than this and still roll off that ball, you know? But this feels super thin. Um, I'm guessing like the colors here aren't really gonna show up like colorful because it's just such a sheer texture. I will play with those other ones. You know, I might use them more in a just moisturize your lips at nighttime kind of way, see how that goes over. But it does seem like the same texture from what I experienced in the Candyland collection. Okay, you wipe it off and the lips do feel kind of nice. I'm gonna play with a couple of things that came from the Taupe collection. I've got this um, lip pencil called Cool BFF. ColourPop really has a lot of different options where lip products are concerned. Is this even transferring down? One of my favorite things, which was actually my little like mini collab with them were these uh, just a tint lip colors. I think these are fabulous. I love the feel. I love the color intensity. Um, I like that even the more dramatic shades will kind of give a little bit of a stain, you know, it just, I really think they're a pleasant lip product. They've got longer wearing like the ultra matte lips, which I haven't used a lot of recently, but for this, I'm just taking this pencil, which is very cool kind of out of my comfort zone color-wise. It really is like a taupey sort of lip. And then they have this gloss that seems a bit warmer. It's called Rattler. Uh, I don't like it when you pull out a gloss. Sometimes this happens with ColourPop with their glosses. They're going haywire. Okay, I don't mind the nude lip with this eye. It's not my favorite tone, but formula-wise, I do like their glosses if they just get that crazy like um, hair applicator under control a bit more. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I really enjoyed the Stone Cold Fox palette and I think you would too if you want a really big selection of cool tone shades. It's definitely something I need to play with more. This is not a full review on that, but just kind of me trying that out. The brush set, I really appreciated how varied everything Thing was. It's a nice complete set, although the feel of some of the face ones felt a little bit flimsy to me if you're looking to pack on coverage like for your foundation or concealer with different ones. Um, I wasn't wild about those, but the eye brushes I really did enjoy. So let me know your take in the comments section. What ColourPop products are you really loving right now? Um, what new things do you have your eye on? And I will talk to you again very soon. Bye guys.